Hey there, friends. Happy Friday to you. I missed my usual Thursday post, so we'll pretend it's Thursday, even though it's Friday. Okay, I've got, <laughs> I've got new uh, Traveler's Notebook Junk Journals for the shop. Thank you guys so much for supporting the shop and buying the first two that I had listed here. Um, over there at Etsy. I really do appreciate that. I, uh, I have five more to add to the shop today. Um, I've worked on them for a couple of days and I'm just having just a fantastic time putting these together. It reminds me of when I discovered Traveler's Notebooks and how much I love them and how much I gravitated to them. So I'm kind of revisiting a favorite thing. This uh, Traveler's Notebook has a dragonfly on the front and a little space to write on the back. The cover is just a heavyweight cardstock. Its clo closure is uh, just yarn that I've laced through an eyelet right here. This is an expandable pocket. This is an idea from the lovely Lee Ann over at Creatively Free To Be Me. This is an original watercolor. Um, I am fond of tearing apart my art. I have journals that I've kept for probably four years, five years, and it's been a real pleasure to look through those journals and decide on things that I'm going to use in these traveler's notebooks. I feel I'm not attached to my art in big ways. I hope that that's something you guys understand. I love to create it and I love to give it away or, you know, sell it is wonderful, but I don't like for it to just sit on shelves and a lot of it just sits on shelves. So, I've decided to use original art pieces in these traveler's notebooks for you guys, and I hope that you do enjoy them. We've got a plastic pocket that's filled with some antique lace and some modern lace, a couple of um, paper strips for you to play with, a little calendar element right here. This is a nine of hearts. I know what that is, y'all. Thank all of you for pitching in and trying to help me figure out my... Um, my cards. I didn't grow up playing cards. This is a vintage photograph. It looks like a graduating class from a college. These guys are definitely a little bit older. Um, this is one of the photographs that I did a tutorial about how to make everything new look old again. And this is one of the photographs that I distressed. This is, uh, I do not know what kind of bird that is, but she's got a little chick right there. It's so sweet. Uh, thank you, Art Angel, for those beautiful postcards. And this is part of my, uh, how I'm learning to copy dye things as well. This is a vintage card, 1958, and I just have it paper clipped in here, but it does act as a little tuck spot. But in, you know, just in case you wanted to use the card in its entirety, it is an entire card. Napkins for you to play with. I still think these books need to be interactive. Um, I think they need to have elements for you to pull out and enjoy. So you will find kind of the same um, flow journal-ish vibe uh, in these Traveler's Notebook Junk Journals because I just can't get away from that. I think you, I think you need to play. I think everybody needs a... It's like, do you remember in the summer when you got a new coloring book and you were so excited about it and you would sit and color? It, it, it's that kind of thing. It should be interactive. It should be something that you just really enjoy. It should be beautiful, but it should be something that you, you know, you're encouraged to play with as well. I've got uh, tags, and I am really digging using fabric as a pull on these tags. More of my copy dye, tea dye little tags up here. I'm remembering when I used to work at a, a pharmacy that I often had to check in and label jewelry. And the, these are like the little tags that we used to tie on jewelry. So a fond memory there. Nelson Ephemera. I love the stamps. And this is a... Um, 
a portion of the 1948 Metropolitan Life Cookbook. A little pocket for you guys. It says time for a cup of tea and it does have some little pull out elements here with some super vintage lace on it. It's even, I did not tea dye this or anything. That is the color of that lace and I'm being so precious with it because I love it so much. This is from the state of Maine dated January the 30. First, 1874. It's a receipt for taxes paid. A little more ephemera right here for you to work with. I think this is the um, 19, I'm sorry, 1876 um, Three Musketeers book that we worked with when we did flow journals. Um, this is this this is so much fun because there there are several things going on here. Uh, it's a strip of paper, a strip of fabric, a pocket, and I've arranged it to where it creates several tuck spots. So you've got a tuck spot here, you've got a tuck spot under the fabric right here that you can stick things into. To me, this also becomes hidden journaling. If you're into hidden journaling, um, I think that it's something that's so intriguing, and I learned about hidden journaling from Jenny Belly uh, when I took her Inspiration Station class, which I highly recommend. It is a free class over at her journalworkshops.ning.com site. you got to go check that out. She is, she is the lady. Uh, another tuck spot right here, this time kind of a double pocket. Do you guys remember these um, little dividers that you used to, you, when we all had like a, a, a notebook binder that had the rings in it and we had these little things that we would, uh, you know, it came with a piece of, of uh cardboard and not cardboard um paper but it was thicker than paper that you would you would slide into this thing and you would label it science math oh my gosh i was so excited to get these it really took me back i'm like oh my goodness it's another thing that i'm thinking huh can i ever find that again i don't know this is awesome newspaper from I believe 1887 yep there's the date right there and it talks about an election um, uh, a, a recall of an election right there just a little pad of paper for you sticking in another this is kind of um Archaic paper, you know, this is uh, date sold, sale price, date paid. This is how people used to do it before QuickBooks. This is the stubby pencil method, that which is the method that I use. And a pocket, a, kind of a library pocket in the back with a couple things sticking in there as well. I really do love the um, the dragonfly. I thought she was very pretty. She's embossed. She's black. She's got some shimmer to her. So very, um, I like dragonflies anyway. Oh my gosh, I got the hummingbird back today. I went out and changed the water in my hummingbird feeder. And I did spray for ants down at the very bottom of it because they were just massed on my hummingbird feeder. Had to get rid of them. I don't really like to spray anything, but, you know, that's what happened. Um, but I got my first hummingbird again. She came back. I was so excited. All right, let's take a look at... I'm calling this book... Um, Marigold. Now, I'll explain that. One of my favorite movies is The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. And I thought that some of these journals have a very Moroccan kind of look to them. And I thought it would be fun to name them after uh, I know that The Best Marigold Hotel was, was filmed in India. But I thought that, you know, that whole kind of Indian Moroccan sort of vibe uh, kind of carries through some of these journals. So this is Marigold, and I really do love her. She's quite colorful. Again, uh, just the, um, the yarn closure here. 
So we'll flip through her. I was really into Tisha Moore uh, a couple years ago, and I did a lot of these Tisha Moore type collages with the fashion magazines. Uh, fabric in the plastic pocket for you to play with, a vintage playing card right here. Some elements tucked into the pockets of our tea dyed uh, stubby pencil method. Uh, bookkeeping paper. This is a bill from a doctor that stated 1885. This is real ephemera, guys. This is not something that I pulled offline and copied. This is the real deal. When you see ephemera in my books, it's the real thing. It's not something photocopied or, or you know, something that I scanned or anything like that. This, these are real deal papers. This is another one of the photos that I clipped from a magazine and then I mounted on some paper and I thought, you know, those people just look happy and I really did like the way they look. Uh, this is a lace element for you and more of the, um, my tea dyed stuff, napkins. This is an example of the uh, everything new has to look old again. <laughs> I got a philatelic magazine from the post office and it was about the birth of air mail. And boy, I tell you, it has some great images in it. That is a free publication, y'all. Uh, definitely pick it up. Uh, Nielsen Ephemera, I think this Nielsen Ephemera is from uh, 1943. So I thought the 1953 I think this is 1952 uh, Culinary Arts Institute uh, recipes would be super cool right here. We have some salvage script for you right there. This is the cover of one of those 1953 um, 1953 recipe magazines. This was considered super fancy and you know they've got a mixed drink over here. These are little pockets that you can pull out and journal on or you know write a note on and send to someone in the mail. This is another example of the the double the double vertical belly bands that I've been really partial to. So we've got a uh, paper belly band right here, a uh, journaling card right here with, uh, uh, this is a handmade button, a la Jenny Belly, and then you've got another tuck spot under the fabric. Inside the pocket are just some things for you to play with. Love that little squirrel. More lace, places for you to journal or post things that you want to post. Another vintage photograph, real vintage. Uh, this is text. Um, this is text uh, tissue paper, which I really do love. This is uh, from the doctor, December thirty first, eighteen eighty four. Another vintage card that I've kind of just washied in here, so it's a complete card and it is signed and you've got a little tag up here for it and another tag right here. More of the really pretty laces that I've been able to utilize in these journals, which is giving me just a lot of pleasure to be able to utilize those those pieces of gorgeous gorgeous fabric and lace. So there we go guys this is Marigold. In keeping with the best exotic Marigold Hotel. I love that movie especially Evelyn Greenshade and this is Evelyn and uh, she is kind of purpley blue, very pretty, beautiful colors, tied with um, with just some yarn, and I'll flip through here right quick. Evelyn Greenshade is my favorite character on um, Best Exotic Miracle Hotel because she's the one who recognizes failure, and she says the only failure is the failure to try, and you're... I'll have to look up the quote, your ability to bounce back is the way that you overcome the world or something like that. It's really inspirational. This is another piece of original art for you guys. I think this was a Jenny Belly Challenge from 2015. 
a bit of a paper stencil for you to play with, a tuck spot right here, vintage sheet music, another vintage card, Nielsen ephemera, another, this is a, a vintage photograph, I think this is 19, it's really hard to tell, I think this is 1940s-ish right here. More of the, this lace is exquisite, uh, I don't have very much of it, again it's not tea dyed, it is that old, it is super old lace. Um, another one of the um, kind of double vertical belly band items that we've been so fond of. And this is a napkin. This is a pull tab right here. And it does have a handmade button on it. I made these buttons out of corrugated cardboard. Another Jenny Belly, uh, Jenny Belly craft. She's so great with everything. Another vintage photograph. I think this is the Boy Scouts. Yeah, it sure is. Boy Scout photograph. 1887 text from the newspaper. Another piece of original art for you that says, Now is the time. These are our fabric swatches from Gail. So super neat. Thank you, Gail, for blessing us with your creativity. And that is it for Evelyn Green Shade. I like the way these traveler's notebooks tie. It's just so simple, yet it's so pretty when it's, you know, when it's all done. And even for a girl who can't tie a bow, I can do that, you guys. <laughs> all right. We have soon on, soon, hold on a second. Sunania. Sunania was Sunny's love interest in Best Exotic Miracle Hotel. She was a lovely girl. Her brother wanted her to marry someone of uh, stature and wealth, and she was in love with Sonny, and Sonny was not stature or wealth, but he was a hard worker, and he was a dreamer, and he believed in his dreams. This is another um, Tisha Moore kind of original piece that I did. So we can just flip through here, making everything new look old again. Don't you love him? Him. I think he's so cool. <laughs> Some tea dog tags for you to play with. A vintage Christmas card. Uh, this is a, a complete Christmas card. This is a doctor's bill from 1885, I believe this one is. Uh, again, vintage ephemera. It's the real thing, the real deal, you guys. Vintage sheet music. Um, some of my travels to Venice postcards. This is the Basilica of St. Mark. Another vintage card for you guys. Kath from 1963. Lace, napkins, postcards. Just fun things to play with. This is another one of our dividers. This divider just really kind of went with the, the papers that I was using, even for the covers. Another vintage photo, this time a graduation photo, probably from a college graduation, I think. And there's an expandable pocket in the back, a la Leanne. And while I'm kind of shouting people out, I know I've talked a lot about Jenny Belly, I, um, I got to tell you guys that Shannon Green is having a 25% off sale in her Etsy shop. I will put a link to Shannon's Etsy shop in the description box below. She and her husband, Jason, who is just the nicest fella, are again um, creatively navigating unemployment. These people have just fascinated me. Um, um, I think a lot of us... Uh, when we get to be midlife, we're having all of these big life changes, you know, with jobs and families and um, jobs a lot. <laughs> and uh, Shannon and Jason have, again, found themselves unemployed, and so she is having a 25% off sale in her Etsy shop. So I will put a link uh, to Shannon's Etsy um, 
in the description box below. And let's just flip through here and I'll tell you about a couple more people. I'd like to thank Dawn over at Let's Make a Mess today for her sweet shout out on her channel. Thank you Dawn, I appreciate that. I will also link Dawn's channel. Um, in the description box. I also have just become uh, a, um, a, a supporter of my pal Leanne on Patreon, and I will also post Leanne's Patreon site. Leanne is, um, she's a lot of fun. She's fun to listen to. She's uplifting. She's funny, funny, funny. Um, I just, she's she's really a young girl who, young lady, young woman, who uh, has great ideas, and she's all about sharing. She has a very uplifting and positive and sweet personality, so um, go support Leanne at Patreon. She is just awesome. 1947 Ephemera, this is from a 1953 cookbook. Uh, good wishes for a Merry Christmas. It's signed Nan. This is another uh, piece of Gail's goodness. I love these things. There's just something about a fabric swatch that is just fun. Told in the Hills. Remember, this is the book that we said was not very PC. But I have to read this to you about spring after a hard summer. Laugh though the world may at the vibrations of poet hearts echoing the songs of the youngest of seasons, how can they help it? It is never the empty vessel that brims over, and with the spring a sort of inspiration is wakened in the most prosaic of us. Chris just peeked in my door and said, thanks for lunch. <laughs> You're welcome. It is never the empty vessel that brims over, and with the spring, a sort of inspiration is awakened in the most prosaic of us. The same spirit of change that thrills the saplings with fresh vitality sends through human veins a creeping ecstasy of new life, and all its insidious penetrating charm seems abroad there in the northern land, escaped from under the white cloak of winter." It's just so pretty. It is, it is, act, it is, it's beautiful writing. It truly is. I will have to find out who the author is of that book. And it's kind of one of those books that is in not so great shape. And I'm thinking about maybe trying to turn that into, you know, maybe a junk journal or a, a traveler's notebook kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure. I've never done one before, but. You know, I'm up for trying new things. Let me get this put back together here. I got all carried away by that beautiful writing. All right, guys. And more vintage sheet music for you. Again, the double vertical belly band arrangement that I'm really having a lot of fun with. Uh, a jack of spades, right? Did I get it right? <laughs> A Boy Scout original vintage photograph, a doctor's bill from 1884, napkins for you to play with, border strips, a little bit of pattern paper. These are so cool because they have clock faces on them. They're buttons with clock faces, so they look really, really neat. And there we have it, you guys, another expandable pocket on the back of this journal, and I'm calling this journal... Um, like clockwork. That heavy breathing you hear is Kronk. He just made his way upstairs. So guys, we've got like clockwork. We've got Miss Dragonfly. We've got Evelyn Greenshade. Sunanya. And Marigold after the best exotic marigold hotel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please look for these Traveler's Notebook junk journals over at my shop a little later on this afternoon. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting the shop. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a positive comment. And I will have Lesson 7 of our How to Use a Flow Journal up sometime today as well. Thank you guys so much. Have a great Friday. Bye.